Hey love and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. As promised, I am back with part two on the subject of what you should know about your retightening. Before I get started, some of you guys have been asking for a detailed tutorial on how to use the new locks tool to uh, interlock. I have slowed down a little bit of this section for you guys so you guys can see, but I will be doing a step-by-step -step tutorial video on how to use the new locks tool. Uh, that might be the next video that I will do so you guys can see how to use it. Okay, so back to the intention of this video is what you should know about your retightenings part two. Now this one right here is more pertaining to sister locks, but it might apply to someone with micro locks as well or maybe even traditional locks. But if you have sister locks, maybe micro locks or traditional locks, it is possible to have more than one locking pattern on your head and your locking pattern can change over time. The reason for that is because you might have different textures throughout your head. You might have some challenging issues um, in some areas of your uh, head where a different pattern is needed. Um, different, if you have a different curl pattern throughout your head, which most people do, um, the locking pattern may change to accommodate the, uh, different, uh, curl patterns you have throughout your head. So it could be a number of things. Um, or it could also be if you're switching locticians and the lock, the loctician isn't able to determine what the last pattern was used. Or if you don't remember, they might just go with the standard or most common um, locking pattern. Uh, most most common locking pattern is a four, but people who self-maintain, some people who self-maintain do a two pattern. So if you self-maintain with a two and then you decide to go to a loctician and they're doing a four, or if the loctician was doing a four and you decide to self-maintain and a two pattern is easier for you, so you go and do a two pattern, to me, to be honest, guys, these patterns, these locking patterns, to me, does not make a huge difference um, overall. But I know some people are anal about their pattern. But at the end of the day, the hair is going to mat regardless of what pattern you use. The hair, the goal is for it to mat. Once it mats, does it really matter about the pattern? Hmm, I'll let y'all ponder on that. But so yeah, there could be many different reasons why your pattern throughout the head, uh, your hair may be different, can change. Um, some people are more comfortable doing one pattern over the other. I know for some patterns that I do, certain points put stress on my hand. And if you're not holding your hair properly and each pattern requires a different, not a pattern, but each point requires a certain position for the hand. Um, and some points are more strenuous on the wrist. If you're not holding your head properly, that point is difficult to um, achieve without straining the wrist of the loctician. And baby, some locticians will just do what's convenient for them. Um, if you're not keeping your head straight, some of y'all be worse than some kids. You put, we put your head in one position, but it goes back to where you feel most comfortable or where you want to have it because you're busy on your phone doing other things. So just be mindful of that, okay? So those there are other reasons too, but those are the main reasons why your pattern might be different throughout your head. So it could be the texture. If you have very, very fine hair on one area and then really um, coarse in the next and you want more volume, you know, so you might do a two pattern in one area. So it varies. So that is one thing you should know, okay? All right, so the next one is extra skinny or thinning locks around the perimeter. They usually get combined, not always, but if it's not strong on its own, it cannot sustain on its own, it might, most of the time will get combined if your loctician is telling you, hey, this, this is on edge, okay? Th this might not make it through the next retie. Consider combining, especially if it's around the hairline. The locks around the hairline are usually about 
fewer strands in there anyways. The locks around the hairline, the hair is finer. Um, the, the, the density is very low. So consider if your, if your lactation is telling you it's too skinny to be on its own, consider, uh, combining and they will give you their best, um, expertise when it comes to that. So another thing I've seen some people ask me if I put products when I interlock the hair. Interlocks retightening does not need product. You do not need product to interlock. I do see on the internet that some people do it. You do not need it. Some people do it for neatness. You can get neatness and achieve that without putting products on the lock to lock. As you can see, I only put products on the end. When I'm done retightening, I oil the scalp. I spray the hair. I put a smooth and shine to seal in that leave-in or whatever we're doing. I will do that, but your retightenings does not need product when you are doing a retightening. Some people do it for neatness, and I don't know what other reason why they do it, but it does not need product to interlock. And another thing, because some people don't have a system for retightening, baby, you might get some locks that <laughs> you might have locks that are skipped during a retightening, and you get home, you're like, wait a minute, a couple of these won't retighten. So if you might have some locks that are skipped. If you do find those and you have very fine hair, just wrap it around with another lock so it doesn't weaken over the next six weeks um, before you go to your consultant to get it done. Just the FYI. And if this happens to you, be gracious with your consultant. It was not done on purpose, I would hope. <laughs> it was probably by mistake, so be gracious. Now let's talk about a couple of myths I've heard about uh, locks. Retightening too often will thin your locks out or will thin your hair out. Uh, that's, that's not true. Um, it is not the frequency. It is the quality of the retightening. Um, if it is being done, to, if, if there's too much tension being done every single time, it will thin out your locks. Um, over time, just think about when you get, um, braids, when you used to get braids back then or crochet braids, when that stuff is too tight, it pulls the hair out. Sometimes that hair just does not come back. So even if you go a long time without a retightening, but every time you get a retightening, that retightening is tight, that is still going to uh, cause your hair to thin. And it's not about the frequency. It is about the tension and the quality of the retightening. Certain interlocking tools uh, snag and break your hair. Not true. It can, but what causes it? That tool on its own does not snag and break your hair. It is the end user. So if the person does not know how to use it properly, you will snag and break your hair. So yeah, it is the end user, the person using it, not necessarily the tool itself. Also, if your head is not positioned right for the position of the tool, it will snag. So if your loctician is new, please be gracious once again. I have to tell y'all to extend grace because I remember when I was new, baby, I was snagging, <laughs> I was snagging hair left and right because you have to get acclimated with the tool. You have to, that tool needs to become an extension of you and it takes time to do that. So be patient with your new locticians, okay? I've also heard that the type of tool makes a difference in the appearance of the locks. Um, I don't think the tool has anything to do with how the lock turns out. I think it has to do with the technique that is being used and the right tension that is being used. So if you're using the proper technique and proper tension, you should have no problems. And another I've heard, the tighter the retightening is, the neater it will be. Uh, no, you do not need it to be tight for it to be neat. You, you can achieve neatness without too much tension on the scalp. Okay, so that is about it. I might do a part three depending on the questions and the concerns that I have in the comments. Um, but if there's a myth that you've heard or something that you've heard and you're not sure about, drop it in the comment and I will um, share my thoughts on it, okay? So thank y'all for watching and see y'all next time.